thank you all for being here. I don't think it's possible for you to understand what a huge opportunity it is to study in the United States. Uh, university college life in America is just the best life you can possibly have. One, you are with the best students in the world from all over the world. The education is really based around discussion and inquiry. It's not rata type education. You really, <laughs> right, you really learn uh, to make an argument, to research something by asking probing questions, uh, and how to argue and communicate with people. And honestly, for the rest of your lives, the ability to communicate and argue with people is, is the key to success in everything. American university life has such great facilities. I mean, it's a very uh, luxurious and comfortable life compared to what even the best schools in Pakistan have to offer. Um, and because of all of those things, it's quite expensive. There are some places, if you're going for an undergraduate degree, that you can go uh, for ten to fifteen thousand dollars to community colleges or whatever. But for an international student, really, you're looking at between twenty-five thousand and fifty thousand dollars a year to study. It's a lot of money. Um, that's why we're very happy at USEFP to have all these scholarship programs to make it possible uh, for people. Most people, I mean, most people just can't afford to pay those kind of fees. It's very difficult. Um, U.S. universities do have scholarship money, but there are a lot of American students lined up for that scholarship money, too. And many, like the state universities, have to favor their own residents. It's very difficult to get a full scholarship just applying directly to a university in the U.S., unless you're in a Ph.D. program. So. We have scholarship money. We have the largest Fulbright program in the world. Our Fulbright program operates in 150 countries. Um, in Pakistan, we are something called, we're called a commission, a Fulbright commission. We're a binational organization. Dr. Sheikh was on our board for the last four years, which is wonderful. Government of Pakistan appoints four of our board members, and the US ambassador appoints four of our American board members. And from that, we try to make decisions that will benefit both countries and send the kind of people from Pakistan who will make a good impression in the United States and then come back and serve uh, to improve the situation in Pakistan. In recent years, more than 50% of our grantees are women, and I'm very happy to see a lot of uh, women in this audience. Please uh, don't feel that you have any uh, disadvantage in applying for any uh, scholarship. On the contrary, even our undergraduate scholarship is about 55% women now from all over Pakistan. So families are supportive. I think families have understood that uh, it's good for their girls also to get uh, higher education and to get the best education in the world. So how many of you are close to finishing a bachelor's degree? Okay, that's quite a few of you. How many of you are, where's the faculty? How many of you are faculty? Okay, you guys are all over there. Uh, for faculty, if you don't have PhDs, I especially today want to encourage you to apply for Fulbright. We have, thanks to the Higher Education Commission of Pakistan, 25 extra PhD scholarships funded by the government of Pakistan. That means right now, for next year, we have 50 slots for fully funded PhDs. Each one of those grants is worth about $250,000. I don't know what that is in rupees, but it's millions, it's a lot. And uh, so put the effort in and put that application in. Um, the rest of you, are you, how many of you are in your first year? Second year? Okay, good. So let me talk to you second year people for a minute. Uh, have any of you heard of the Global Undergraduate Program? 
I believe we've sent two or three students in the Global U grad program from SMIU. All right, that, okay, the application for that program is going to be open next October. It'll be announced then. It's, that seems like a long time from now, I know. Uh, but on that program, you have a, a chance to go to the US for a semester and then come back and finish your bachelor's degree here. Now, the problem with that is just that we had 9,000 applicants last year, this year, I should say, for our 300 slots. But still, we have 300 slots. So if you're going to apply, I would encourage you very much to apply. If you're going to apply, apply seriously. Write good answers to those essays. If you don't take it seriously and do a good job and do the preparation required, you don't have a chance. There's no point in just sort of filling out the form. You really need, it is very competitive. You need to put the effort in. And honestly, out of those 9,000, it's no, nowhere near half who put in that real effort that's required. So put in the effort and you're halfway there. For those of you, who's in their third year? Okay, well see, you're the perfect group for me to be talking to in a way because there's a lot of preparation required for going to the US uh, for a master's degree. Uh, out of all of you people, how many of you would be interested or willing to go to the US? Okay, that's, I'm happy to see that. I wish it were 100%, but it, that's a good, uh, a good number. If you're really interested in going, you need to prepare. One, you need to research and understand your field of study. Okay, if you want to be, it doesn't matter what you want to be. We send people in every single field there is. We send them in engineering, in law, in art. Even yesterday I was on the radio with a stand-up comedian who went in theater. We send people in every subject. And we don't have quotas for any subject. We don't have uh, quotas. We have no type of quotas, no regional quotas, no gender quotas, no discipline quotas, nothing. It's all on merit. But whatever your subject is, if you're going to go for a master's degree, you should be applying to go in a subject that you genuinely are interested in. If you are not really interested in your subject, when you write your study objectives, we can tell. We read hundreds and hundreds of applications over the years. And those people who are genuinely interested in their subject, it comes through in the application. Um, so one is, you know, get familiar with your own field. Read a little bit in the journals of your field. Use the library you have to get excited about something in your field. You don't need to have a research topic. You don't need to have a specific topic but you have to have a love of your field. Uh, you can also get a little bit of an idea by researching on the internet the different programs in your field in the United States. See what kind of classes they offer. See who the professors are and get a feeling for what it would, start thinking about what would it be like to be working with that person to, to get the enthusiasm to write that uh, properly. So that's one preparation. Two you need to have the standardized test scores. Now, you don't have to have perfect test scores. You don't even have to have necessarily above average test scores. Most people in Pakistan, most faculty members at public universities get average scores. So we're not expecting a huge amount from the students. There, we have some minimal, uh, minimum threshold you need to achieve, uh, but if you're going in engineering, you need a good quantitative score. We can't tell a university in America to take you as an engineering student if you don't have basic math skills. They're not going to take you. You have to, you have to have a decent score. If you're going in English literature, you don't need a good math score, but you need a decent English score. Um, and we try to really balance and see what subject, what the subject is, and which score is important and weight it accordingly. Now, what if you don't have great grades? Not everybody we send has a, a perfect or e even a you know, superior GPA. But if you don't have really good grades, then it's more important to get a good GRE score. 
so that you can show that you have you know the capacity to do well in a program so so I mean if you have both a good GRE score and good grades and you really take the care to fill out that application you have every expectation to get shortlisted and uh, I can say personally because we have not we don't have I think any Fulbright applicants this year from SMIU uh, that we will really look carefully at applications from here. We want your school to have a Fulbrighter. Okay, <laughs> we do. And uh, seriously, we had, last year we had applicants from 105 different universities in Pakistan, and our final selection, it's not just from LUMS and from NAST or IBA, we have uh, Fulbrighters from 39 different universities in Pakistan. SMIU can be among those, okay? I'm sure somebody sitting in here is gonna be the first Fulbrighter, okay? And I, I really, if I, Dr. Sheikh, as you can see, is a genuine supporter of the Fulbright program. If you really say, uh, talk to your, your administration here say like I'm really serious about doing this application I think they will support you and help you 